Sometimes yours truly here. This is an object. Objects exist to do something for me, while I, Lacey, cutter of paper, am the subject. So if a guy does anything for a girl, he's being objectified. Subjects act, while objects are acted upon. No. Wrong. And bullshit. But do continue anyway to make a video on this topic forever because I think that it is a huge hindrance to a truly equal, healthy, sex-positive society. Equal and sex-positive? Ah yes, of course. That's a society where women do whatever they want, and men are scolded and punished for doing anything. Example, women dress like sluts on college campus, and that's their right. Boys stare at women dressed like sluts and get expelled for harassment. That kind of sex-positive equal society? Drumroll please! Sexual objectification. Objectification is defined as the viewing of people solely as depersonalized objects of desire instead of individuals with complex personalities and desires or plans of their own. Ah, I know what you mean. Like when men are seen as protectors and providers, walking ATMs, and personal therapists for a woman to dump all of her baggage on, and insist that he be the one to buy her dinner and pay for that privilege. Ah yes, I have been objectified often to have sex with. Women are very often portrayed as pretty things to look at, something to try to have sex with. Thankfully John the other explained that was an editing mistake and the syllable, whoa, was snipped out. So what she meant to say was women are seen as pretty things, not men. And for the record, that's sad. I wish I was seen as a pretty thing rather than, at best, a walking wallet, and at worst, a walking rape machine. I seriously wish I was too pretty and valuable to be drafted against my will and forced to die for my country. You know, that right there is the difference between male objectification and female objectification. Men are disposable utilitarian objects, like a tampon. A woman is a special and sacred object like a beautiful work of art that must be guarded and protected at all cost. Something to try to have sex with. Turn on almost any sitcom on TV and you're going to see this normalized. We're so heavily exposed to this imagery that scientists have found that both men and women see women's bodies as a mishmash of sexual body parts while we see men as whole people. I'm really skeptical on that. Either you are misrepresenting the findings of a social psychology study, which is only barely an actual science, or it's just more typical junk science. I swear today's politically correct sensationalist spin doctor scientists remind me more and more of junk journalists, and when you think about it, the way they spin everything for sensationalism, to make the headlines, to receive a grant, it is on par with journalists making shit up to sell newspapers to get a promotion, but I am straying from the subject, Lacey here is bitching that the media portrays women as valuable objects of desire for men to pursue, and she is right, however I am at a total loss on how this hurts women, first off, it's an ugly reflection of reality. Secondly, it places women in a position of power and authority. These men who are always pursuing women, they act like little brown noses trying to impress their boss. They are skydiving and climbing mountains to impress these women. They are embarrassing themselves and throwing themselves at women, just begging for her approval. These men are disgusting. They have no backbone. They are sniveling cowards. Women have all this power over them. And the really sad thing is, this is how the majority of men and women really are. But what confuses me is why our favorite feminazi, Lacey Green, seems to have a problem with this. I mean, you just figure this would be a feminist utopia, but hey, that's women for ya. Even when you hand them paradise, they just bitch about not having anything to bitch about. You know, I sometimes think whining and complaining is masturbation for women. Hot, right? Uh, uh, not really. I actually think it's pretty messed up. Speaking of hot though, often objectification is confused with thinking that a woman's hot. But objectification is not the same as being sexual or being sexually attracted to someone. That's a natural part of life, right? But what's not natural and is very much manufactured is constantly portraying women as sex objects for male pleasure. Women are not being portrayed as sex objects. When female models are used to entice men, this is not objectification. Since you just said men being attracted to women, that is, finding them sexy, is not objectification. So when you start that sentence off with women being portrayed as sex objects what you really meant to say was women being portrayed as sexy. So, you could say that women being portrayed as sexy, is objectification. However, you just got through saying a woman being found sexy by men is not objectification. So you could say women being portrayed as sexy, for the sake of selling something or marketing something is the objectification of her sexuality, but then you'd have to confess that all modeling of any kind whatsoever is objectifying the model, or the model's specific type, 
Example, an African American model or actor is having his blackness objectified, a gay model or actor is having his gayness objectified, a Christian model or actor being used to promote Christianity is having his Christianity objectified, a human model representing humanity is having his humanity objectified and so on, because this concept is completely useless and takes away your women are victims card, I do declare that you have not proven the existence of objectification as anything tangible outside the sphere of your own feminist religion. But here is the part of your video I think is interesting. But what's not natural and is very much manufactured is constantly portraying women as sex objects for male pleasure. Who is behind that? Who is doing that? Who are these people and what is their motive? Since it is so totally unnatural and manufactured, who is behind this conspiracy against humanity? Is it the Illuminati, the Freemasons, the Bilderbergs, or your polymorphic patriarchy? Does Alex Jones have any leads on this conspiracy? If you're trying to tell me that using the natural sexual allure of beautiful women to capture the attention of men, that is to say, exploit men's sexual needs, for financial profit, somehow hurts women, dear god imagine what it's doing to the males, males are having their natural biological needs manipulated into parting with their hard earned cash, and women are being financially rewarded for this manipulation, but of course, women are the victims, because your feminist religion tells you so. As far as using and exploiting people to make a buck, welcome to the world of advertising, advertisers mix and match words to mislead consumers, they use emotionally gripping dramatizations to exaggerate something's capabilities. They prey on your guilt, your fear, your needs, your vulnerabilities, they tell you that you are miserable. But fear not, they can turn your life around if you just hand them your credit card, they are masters of doublespeak and psychology, they exploit every demographic they can. Yet you're going to point out that the female sex in general is somehow a victim of this via mechanism of objectification? I laugh in your general direction and call bullshit, but I agree that women making a living by enticing males through advertisement needs to end, not by government regulation of course, but by a cultural movement. Objectification is women's magazines being littered with all of the things that men don't like. So are men being objectified when men's magazines are littered with things women do and don't like? Seems to me men's and women's magazines are very similar, each one preys on the insecurities of its target demographic, and promises tips to help you better attract members of the opposite sex, and is about 80% advertisement for products to help you be more attractive, and 20% content consisting of idiotic opinion pieces, sometimes based on junk science, that will all be contradicted in the next issue, a vicious cycle of exploiting people, making them feel bad about themselves so that the advertisers can promise to fix all your flaws if you just buy their product, buy this lipstick to bag that hunk, buy this electric razor to score with that supermodel, again, welcome to the world of advertising and marketing, the psychopath's utopia, women are not the only victims, but your feminist religion has blinded you with such a victim complex and men, often codified as society or patriarchy are always the scapegoat, I swear. A feminist could watch 10 men and 10 women gunned down in cold blood, and she'd run around screaming oh my god, 10 women were just shot completely neglecting to even realize 10 men also were gunned down in front of her, I swear, the self-centered blind bigotry inherent in feminism is amazing, if Hitler possessed the psychopathic manipulative skills of Gloria Steinem, we'd all be speaking German today, anyhow, the solution to this problem is simple, ladies, stop buying those stupid magazines, and men. You two need to stop buying those stupid men's magazines, that electric razor isn't going to get you pussy, neither is that cologne, that watch, or any other product, and none of their contradictory advice and quote mind junk science snippets are going to get you laid either, so stop feeding the machine, stop rewarding these female models with your purchase of the magazine, and stop clicking on those videos and articles because of the sexy thumbnail image used to entice you learn to ignore that shit on a deep and reflexive level like a flashing pop-up hat telling you to click here to collect a free xbox that you just won, if you're going to take part in handing cash to a prostitute, which is what these models are, then hand money to an actual prostitute and get an actual blowjob, and skip wearing the smelly aftershave being marketed to you that won't result in you getting a blowjob. Objectification is being catcalled and harassed just for walking down the street. I've explained in past videos that catcalling is what women get from men. A thuggish beatdown is what men get from rowdy men, but rather than harping on that, I am going to agree with you, guys, stop it, stop whistling at women, stop cat calling them, it's fucking low class, I know why you do it, you do it to rebel against women's authority always scolding you and shaming you, they entice you, and then scold you for being enticed, that abusive tease and denial, 
We live in a female-centered society where your male sexuality is either being exploited or demonized, and when you're no longer at work or at school and you feel the spirit of freedom in you, you holler something vulgar to one of these stuck-up bitches, it feels liberating, like you're reclaiming the manhood our matriarchal society has taken away from you, but stop it. Don't give these attention whores the satisfaction, every time you whistle and cat call a bitch, you validate her self-worth, you are admitting she has sexual power over you and giving her something to get on YouTube and bitch about, it's a win-win-win situation for her, and all you get out of it is humiliating yourself in public, these thirsty attention whores need the attention, do yourself a favor and starve them of that attention and get to keep a little dignity at the same time. It's save the boobies and don't let cancer steal second base as breast cancer campaign slogans. Again, Lacey, I seem to be agreeing with you a lot. Though save the boobs type slogans in the breast cancer fundraising is in bad taste, it is degrading to women who have suffered breast cancer and are now lacking the very thing being glorified and worshipped by these campaigns, and the biggest problem of all, that money needs to be going to prostate cancer, I hope every man that's worn a shirt with a degrading save the boobs type slogan gets prostate cancer, not because it's a rude and offensive slogan, but because that's what he should have been advocating for, rather than putting the female sex ahead of his own interest. It's shitty commercial after shitty commercial using women's bodies to sell everything from A to Z. Close-ups on her ass, her lips, her breasts to sell beer? Cologne? Jeans? Jewelry? Sometimes it's hard to tell what they're even selling. Again, I agree, women receiving cash via the manipulation of men's sexual needs does need to stop. But none of this has anything to do with this mythical objectification you are going on about. The exploitation of the male sex drive is not the objectification of women. Objectification is the preoccupation with trans women's genitals and defining her in terms of her sex parts. I'm sorry, I don't think I heard you right. Can you say that again? Objectification is the preoccupation with trans women's genitals and defining her in terms of her sex parts. Um, no, no one, outside of Tumblr and possibly a large percentage of fans of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, has a preoccupation with trans people, and how the fuck do you classify someone as male or female without taking their sex organs into consideration? Are you suggesting that we define male and female by how people personally feel? If so, I feel like and identify as King BJ, and as the king I am, I demand that all women get on their knees and suck my cock, refusal to do so is transphobia, I identify as a king with entitlements to blowjobs, and any lack of society playing along with my personal delusion is guilty of bigotry, but seriously, a person's sex is determined by their sex parts, it is the one and only way in which sex is identified. It's being bombarded with sexy cleavage in every magazine ever. Like OMG, Lacey, you're totally being objectified, who is doing this to you? It's being bombarded with sexy cleavage, 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 it's being bombarded with sexy cleavage. You have a video called Sexting, where you do this sexy scene. Step one, remove clothing. Step two, take pictures of the camera phone. Step three, press enter. Oh sure, you weren't trying to be a little sex kitten on YouTube for views, you weren't whoring yourself out, you were just demonstrating the phenomenon, and all of your videos with your cleavage in the words sex, masturbation, orgasm, etc in the title, well none of that is geared towards generating YouTube views and thus lining your pockets. It's all about getting people to talk about these things as part of your sex ed bullshit, yeah, you keep telling yourself that. You have a video called comments about my body where you and yourself, with the name Amy, have a conversation about your big shoulders, a euphemism for breasts, being shown off is distracting, and here is how that went. You can help what you wear. Yeah, so fix it. <laughs> you can't concentrate because of the way that my body is, so your solution is for me to change the way that I dress? Well, yeah, I'd appreciate it. And I would appreciate it if you'd stop blaming me for a problem that's clearly yours. Now what if this fictitious argument wasn't about your tits being distracting, but instead about how showing them off for views is objectifying women? See how that works? A female model, actress, pop star, shows off their body for profit, the same way you show off your body for profit. And a magazine or television network acts as the publishing medium, in the way that YouTube is your publishing medium, 
and it's objectifying women, oh but when you do it, it's totally justified, and your earlier videos, you had the camera above your head and angled down, for maximum cleavage exposure, I love the video where amazing atheist called you out on it, and called out all your bullshit when you had the overhead cam pointing down at your tits, and your exaggerated concern for this girl he pwned, in fact, him making that video response to you, way back in late 2008 or early 2009, that was the first time I ever heard of you, and I knew what a hypocritical sociopathic person you were from the beginning, in fact, let's briefly take a trip back to when you were called out on your bullshits big time, for the first time on YouTube. So I heard that Lacey19, more commonly known as Go Green 18 uh, made a video about me. It seems that she's taken issue with Ownage Fortnite and just has a few points of contention that she'd like to point out. Um, and she's an atheist, so I'm sure she'll come at me pretty directly. I mean, she's above such cheap tricks as, you know, filming herself from above to get a good shot of her cleavage while she talks in a really sad voice, you know, to make me look like the bad guy. I am sick. I am positively sickened and horrified by what is going on in the atheist community right now. Oh, fuck. Um, all of you probably know about TJ's Ownage Fortnite. Um, <sighs> this kind of behavior isn't okay. Um, he says that, you know, he's going to be, you know, he wants a free exchange of ideas and that people should be fighting over, you know, who's right or whatever. Fine. Fine. Um, I feel that. I mean, you guys have seen my videos. I feel that, alright? Um, I don't, I, what I don't feel is, I don't feel attacking people personally. Why is it, Lacey, that as you're talking about feeling, you keep grabbing your fucking tits? <gasps> what is that? Is that a conscious manipulation of the males in your audience? Because if it is, it's pretty fucking slimy, just letting you know. And if it's a subconscious thing, you might want to fucking work on toning it down. My heart really, right now, is just going out to the 17-year-old girl who was attacked by TJ. The 17-year-old girl who was attacked by TJ. That's really how you want to phrase that. Really. Not the 17-year-old girl who had a video made about her by TJ, or the 17-year-old girl who was owned by TJ, or the 17-year-old girl who TJ made an attack video against, the 17-year-old girl who was attacked by TJ. As if this were some incident that, you know, involved a knife in some back alley somewhere. I hate this passive-aggressive shit, Lacey. Everything about this video is a put-on. You are a fucking phony. You know how I know? Because if you were really this sad, because the amazing atheist he picked on a 17-year-old bigot, has gone after a 12-year-old girl, a girl, a little girl, as a little girl would, a 12-year-old girl. 12 year old girl and threaten this little 12 year old girl a bunch of cowards going after a 12 year old girl for going after a 12 year old girl because she oh a little girl had the video exploiting this 12 year old girl because a 12 year old girl now you're attacking children you're attacking children she's in adolescence self as a little girl she's a 12 year old girl fucktards a 12 year old girl the fact that you went after a girl a little girl 12 year old girl 12 years old of a 12 year old girl sorry i had a flashback to my own feminist phony doing a similar put on do continue tj oh the fucking psychotic homophobic 17 year old bitch was fucking owned by tj i just don't know 
If that was genuine, then you would have fucking killed yourself by now. If that's how you react to such a minor tragedy, then I can't imagine the pain you must feel when you look at the genocide in Darfur or some shit like that. You would have just slit your fucking wrist by now. So, I don't believe for one second that you're, oh no, i just sick to my stomach, what's going on? Oh, oh, look at my tits some more, look at them heave as I cry. Please, bitch, give me a fucking break. God, I fucking love TJ. Back in the day before YouTube neutered him, he had made videos that made grown men break down and cry on cam and delete their channel. Anyhow, Lacey, you were a phony back then and you still are. You use your tits for YouTube views. I don't think there is a single video where you don't have your makeup all done, the word sex in the title of the video, and your cleavage on cam. You even do this at a very inappropriate time. Here's an example of what I mean, your video about when love gets violent, a very serious video about domestic violence, let's take a look at this. After that serious and disturbing intro, what's the first thing we cut to? Your tits of course. Is that really appropriate? And before anyone says well you know Razor, she's a large breasted woman and her breasts are bound to be noticed and, look, before you even go there, let's take a close look at the camera angle. Notice that the top of her head is cut off, notice that if she were to tilt that camera up, just a little, or raise it just a few inches, her massive cleavage would disappear, and we could see her entire head. Well I can't move her camera, but I can move the frame itself, so take a look. Scary, and it's real. It happens a lot more than people think. And even though it's an uncomfortable topic, in order to end the violence in our relationships, we have to talk. Exactly enough room to finish showing the top of your head, and just enough to remove your massive cleavage from the frame. Kill two birds with one stone. And I just realized something, your camera, it really is angled downward, even in this video. It's just not done to the same extent as some of your older videos, but it is still sitting up high, and slightly angled downward to maximize focus on your cleavage. Right after that serious and disturbing introduction, in a video where you want to get serious and talk about domestic violence, and yet your outfit and camera are still set up for maximum cleavage, maximum sex appeal, a serious message, and you are still using sex to sell it, who can take your message about anything serious when your entire recording equipment and wardrobe is ridiculously adjusted to maximize focus on your tits and sex appeal, and it reminds me of something else you say in the video. It's shitty commercial after shitty commercial using women's bodies to sell everything from A to Z. Close-ups on her ass, her lips, her breasts. To be exposed to this imagery that scientists have found that both men and women see women's bodies as a mishmash of sexual body parts, while we see men as whole people. A cultural narrative looks at men as whole people. Maybe men are being seen as whole people because they don't cut off portions of their head to have room to zoom in on their sexual body parts? Ever think of that? And the image of the woman's breasts without arms or a head in that commercial? Maybe we can call that statue the lacy green statue, a dedication to the fine art of removing portions of yourself in videos to maximize focus on your tits. If you're going to bitch about close-ups on women's sexual body parts, which cut off the rest of her, Making her not such a whole person I think you might want to practice what you preach and stop being a part of the problem, Lacey, I am not expecting or asking you to even be a part of the solution, just stop being a part of the very problem you are bitching about, did you ever stop to think that this objectification you speak of, which I am going to have to interpret you as actually meaning, viewing women as sexual creatures first, and everything second, or assigning sex appeal and fucking to women as their primary characteristic, none of which is actually objectification, but I think it's what you mean when you say this bullshit term. Anyhow, did you ever stop to think that this so-called objectification is the natural outcome of women's sex-positive behavior? You know, women in the Western world are currently acting like out-of-control sex maniacs, and not hesitating to use their sex appeal as a tool to get what they want from men, as a bargaining chip etc., and using their sex appeal to gain attention because they otherwise have nothing whatsoever to offer humanity by which to get attention for. Did you ever stop to think that this sex-positive behavior from women is the very thing leading to the cultural view of women as creatures of sex, 
or sex objects as you put it, Lacey. A person who eats a lot of junk food and overindulges in calories is going to become fat as a consequence. A person that binge drinks is going to feel hungover the next day as a natural consequence. A woman that uses her power of sex appeal and seduction to get attention, get money, and to get by in life, is going to be looked upon as nothing but a walking cum receptacle as a natural consequence of her acting like a walking talking cum receptacle. Again, you preach this sex positive shit, then bitch about the consequences of a sex positive slut culture. We can't live in a society where male scientists come to work with no jewelry, dressed down in a proper fitting lab coat, while the female scientists are coming to work with skin tight outfits that are open in the front to maximize boobage, and a tiny little skirt to show off their legs. Clacking around in high heels and having their long loose jewelry jingling around, and expect the women to be taken as serious as the men. And I am not saying women scientists actually tend to dress that way. It was a bit of an exaggeration to represent the fact that many women often do come to work like it's a fashion show or a singles bar rather than a place of serious business, and when women are told to dress down, women like you bitch about how being told to dress down is objectification and others call it patriarchal oppression or slut shaming, here is an example, from this exact video, where you comment on school girls being told to dress down or conservative so as to not distract boys. It's school dress codes for girls that are designed not to distract the boys because her knees, her shoulders are so sexualized that a tank top is deemed inappropriate. So when girls dress in clothes that maximize their skin exposure and curves, and boys notice their skin and curves, they are being objectified by the male gaze. When they are told to dress less sexy, you claim this is also objectification. What this really translates to is anger at males for having sexual thoughts. It is the demonization of male sexual nature, it's all about the tease and denial, a woman has a right to tease the boys up, but boys don't have the right to get teased up, being able to entice males, yet scolding males for getting enticed, is just a type of bullying, and I call this misandry, and in this particular case, the misandry is rooted in the woman's sexual ego, but I am not going to make this long video even longer by getting into a pseudo Freudian rant, the point is, you're completely full of shit. You advocate for a slut culture for women, but rally against the natural consequences of this behavior, you get yourself all dolled up real good on camera, adjust the camera angle to maximize attention on your tits for attention and money, and then bitch when you get the attention, such as this part of your video. Inappropriate. Objectification is the thousands of comments on my YouTube videos where men talk about my breasts, my body, and leave graphic sexual comments about me. Get off of it Lacey. You're a fucking cam whore disguising it as a sex educator. You use your cleavage to help breaking the views. Just like those magazines. Just like the models that pose for those magazines. But call it objectification when other women do it, because you have yourself convinced you're doing it for a noble cause, and if there's a problem it's with everyone else, it's the looker not the stripper that has the problem. But again, only when you're the stripper, when any other woman does it, it's an excuse to cry about female objectification. And sadly you're not the only feminist to pull this shit, it's a common sex positive feminist tactic, prey on a male libido and act like a slut for money and attention, give a self righteous girl power excuse for it, but then call the exact same behavior degrading and sexist and objectifying when another woman does it, it's like you all sit around being cam whores, and you all call each other out on it, but rather than addressing the woman cam whoring, you refer to it as society's problems, as a product of our culture, patriarchy or whatever other bullshit you cook up, women using their sexual power over men, and finding a way to call the female sex a victim for it. It's being bombarded with sexy cleavage, it's being bombarded with sexy cleavage, it's being bombarded with sexy cleavage, it's being bombarded with sexy cleavage. Oh for fuck's sakes, stop being a part of the problem and start being a part of the solution. You got anything else Lacey? while being told that breastfeeding is obscene. It's school dress codes for girls that are designed not to distract the boys because her knees, her shoulders are so sexualized that a tank top is deemed inappropriate. Hey, remember earlier in the video when I said this? Truly equal, healthy, sex positive society. Equal and sex positive? Ah yes of course, that's a society where women do whatever they want, and men are scolded and punished for doing anything. Example? Women dress like sluts on college campus, and that's their right, boys stare at women dressed like sluts and get expelled for harassment, that kind of sex positive equal society? Looks like I was right, a girl dress is provocative and it's her right, that's a sex positive society, a boy looks at her, and it's not his right, that's not a sex positive society, that's harassment, it's equality when a girl does it, but harassment when a boy does it, I hope all you feminists watching this that say, 
feminism isn't about hating men, really and truly let that fact sink in. You got anything else, Lacey? Objectification is the thousands of comments on my YouTube videos where men talk about my breasts, my body, and leave graphic sexual comments about me. It's oh, it's the men that comment on your videos that objectify you, not you doing it to yourself. Maybe if you covered your tits, didn't do your hair and make up for maximum sex appeal, stick the words sex masturbation orgasm into the title of your videos, and you actually had more to say than just being a fucking bobblehead with some copy-paste feminist talking points and copy-paste sensational junk science and junk journalism snippets. Maybe if you actually dressed like a decent lady, or at least held a fucking doctorate's degree in either psychology or biology, and did long in-depth lectures on sex, you'd have a drop of integrity that might get noticed. Because right now Lacey, you are one of those women's magazines, you use the exact tactics, have the same content, and do it for the same reason, a brief rehashing of some study some kind of survey, insert a few talking points to fill out four whole paragraphs of material, and sell the whole thing with thumbnails of your cleavage, and insert a shocking eye-catching title, you, Lacey, are an objectifying sexploitation women's magazine in video form, you bill yourself as a sex expert, without having any kind of a doctorate's degree in anything. I suppose sex expert is a euphemism for sucked a lot of cock. For fuck's sakes Lacey, you're a shallow bobblehead cam whore, you're a fucking YouTube beauty guru, but with more exploitation of sex for views and a bit of feminist preaching for the illusion of social commentary, all of your success is nothing more than doing the softcore version of masturbating on cam for money, but in your mind, it's not you, it's the boys leaving comments, just like it's the men paying lots of money to jack off to a naked woman on cam, they are objectifying her, not her. It's the porn company hosting the service, not the women themselves that create the objectification, it's always the fault of men, it's not the stripper objectifying women, it's the men paying her, it's the nightclub owner hosting the event, but never the fault of the woman, it's the magazine owner, the TV station owner, and the consumer of this media that objectify women, but never the actual grown adult women doing this of their own free will, nope, never the fault of the woman, the women cannot be held in any way accountable, and why is that lacy, aren't they subjects? Or are you trying to tell me they are objects? You see, this is the thought process behind the Honey Badger radio program with the title Feminism Objectifies Lacey Green. The whole concept behind blame the men, blame the media, blame the commentators, but exonerate the women of the responsibility, is a declaration that these women are objects, things without agency. The only way a woman can be exempt from taking responsibility for this sexualization for cash via manipulation of the male libido, is if the woman was without agency and is in fact nothing more than an object, thus feminism, is the thing viewing them as objects, because feminism says these women cannot be responsible, and place the blame on the abstract society and culture, or other code word for men, thus declaring men are people with agency and must be held accountable for their behavior but women are not, that is why feminism objectifies women, not men, not patriarchy, not men's rights activists, we MRAs see women as people with agency, not objects, and feminism, as you are so greatly demonstrating, believes only men have agency, women are just objects, and you're proving it, hey, it's not Lacey Green's fault that showing off cleavage and making video after video about sex, with the words sex masturbation orgasm results in negative attention from men, she can't be blamed, she is just an object to be acted on, it's those men with all of their agency and free will that are doing the objectification, again, Remember when I said stop being a part of the problem and start being a part of the solution? It's good advice, take it. And yes, men do need to quit commenting on your videos, they need to quit watching altogether. Gentlemen, every time you click on her video you make her money, and you give her attention, she doesn't deserve either, because she has never done any worthwhile thing to warrant your attention, and she is, according to her own ideology, or religion as it may be, objectifying the female sex when she uses sexploitation for views. If she wants attention, let her actually do something to earn attention, giving her attention, just for her big tits, is the reaffirmation that she, by virtue of being female, has some automatic value, and to my MIGTO and MRA brothers, let us push the very notion that in order for a woman to receive attention, she must do as men do, and warrant that attention, every time a woman is given attention in the form of video views, cash, compliments, cat calls, just for the fact she has female reproductive organs, is a validation that femaleness is a value unto itself, thereby devaluing men, you've heard it before, women are humans being, men are humans doing, let us do our part to change that, make women do something for cash, attention, validation, so you're right Lacey, 
Those men shouldn't be leaving comments on your videos, they shouldn't even be watching, no one should. Your sexy video titles and cleavage shot thumbnails should be ignored just like all other spam content. It's a flood of movies and TV shows where men of all different body types date women of one body type. It's women's bodies used as sexy background accessories and music videos. Objectification is the idea that men and women simply cannot be friends because men could never see a woman as anything but sexual. It's regular Halloween costumes for boys and sexed up versions, only sexed up versions, for girls. Again, is this the fault of the Freemasons, the Illuminati? The patriarchy, who is behind this conspiracy, are male-centric corporations sitting around saying I have this wonderful idea, let's trash all the normal Halloween costumes for the girls, and leave them with only sexy costumes, and force all these little girls to walk around looking slutty, and then they do their evil laugh and Mr. Burns from The Simpsons stands the like a vulture placing his fingers together and hissing out the word, excellent, again, if Halloween costumes for girls are risque and sexualized, who is doing this and why? Did you ever stop to think these teens and tweens are actually the ones preferring the flashy sexy costumes, maybe the department stores are ordering costumes that sold well last year, and are not ordering all the costumes that people didn't want, that had to be marked down to 90% off just to get them out of the store after last Halloween, and clothe in corporations that make these costumes, which tend to be subsidiaries of normal brand name companies, are just building and shipping what the department stores demand. And so you have a system of reduction leaving only the most desired costumes, and those costumes for girls happen to be sexy because girls want to look and feel sexy. Did it ever once cross your mind that a lot of the things females do, are things females want to do with their free will and personal agency, and that they are not objects being acted on by some cloak and dagger shadow government run by a secret patriarchal society with a hidden social engineering agenda, you ever stop to consider that, no, you don't? Right then, carry on. The cultural narrative looks at men as whole people, which leads to mostly men's stories being told, 80% of political offices being occupied by men, men occupying the highest ranks in virtually every industry in the world. Thirdly, because women's bodies are subject to constant frivolous criticism, girls learn quickly to self-objectify. The APA reports that self-objectification results in lower cognitive and motor functioning, increased sexual dysfunction, and body shame. It found that self-objectification is direct related to girls pursuing fewer careers in STEM fields. It's also a major contributor to mental health issues like eating disorders and depression which disproportionately affect young women. Forgive me, but did you just say, in a roundabout way, that girls body snarking each other makes women stupid and mentally ill? I mean, you did just say because women's bodies are subject to frivolous criticism, that they have lowered cognitive function and lower motor skills and a shitload of mental problems, so girls are dumber than boys and are less mentally stable, and have less motor skills, and not only is that sexist misogyny if a guy says it, but the reason for this is because of beauty standards, and women showing off their curves, which makes this magic thing happen called objectification which is what makes girls stupid and mentally unbalanced compared to boys, wow, that's horrible, but I did just realize something, if women displaying themselves sexually leads to all this psychological harm then girls must be protected from this public health hazard by the only logical way possible, women must be forced to cover their bodies from head to toe, women must never be displayed in art or in advertising as beautiful or sexy, they must have their shameful harmful curves hidden from public view at all times, maybe we can dress women like this. And another thought occurs to me, since women are terrified and terrorized and rape cultured by males cat calling them, whistling, and even looking at them, we should pass a new law in our society, for the protection of women, that women not be allowed to leave the safety of their house without a strong male relative present to escort them, and since women in this day and age seem to suffer from chronic alcoholism and cannot consent to sex when drinking, perhaps we need laws against women consuming alcohol, after all, this is serious, we have an epidemic according to feminists, and we must make new laws to keep the women safe, you know something, I was told a long time ago, that Islam was born out of the natural conditions of ever neurotic women demanding more and more and more safety and protection from every possible harm real or imagined, the culture kept adopting more and more rules to make women feel safe, and the end result was Islam, Islam was in some ways the proto-patriarchy, but the catch is, patriarchy was the manifestation of feminism, females demanding protection, demanding provision, 
insisting that they are rare valuable priceless objects that mustn't be held accountable for anything, and must be protected from everything, and thus strict gender roles were constructed to protect women, men went out and worked all day and kept the women inside the home all warm and safe from the danger around every corner, Lacey, I didn't used to take that so seriously, but after listening to you anxiety ridden neurotic feminists cry about every microscopic thing out to get you, hurt you, rape you, objectify you, and how we as a society must keep you fragile little darlings safe from everything, and most importantly, safe from female sexiness which causes all of this psychological trauma, all of your eating disorders and self-esteem and learning disabilities yada yada yada, I can see it, I can really see your society locking women in the house and barricading the doors, and keeping women covered so that their beauty does not objectify and intimidate other women, I really can see that being the foundation on which Islam was created, Oh and this internalized self-objectification and nonsense, this is why women don't enter the STEM fields, if so, we need to put an end to all the special women only scholarships that theoretically counter all the alleged sex discrimination in these fields which is what we have been told is the cause of less women in science, because, as you just pointed out, it's not old boys clubs, it's not sexism, it's sexy women on women's magazines and beer commercials that give fragile brain females these mental problems that discourage them from making certain career choices, and if this is true with the STEM fields, and it obviously is or you wouldn't have mentioned it, then how likely is it that this is the cause of women lacking numbers in any given career field, so basically what you are saying Lacey, is due to objectification from the media, women are developing mental problems which are affecting their career choices, which is why there is a pay gap, and if this is true, then all academic scholarships and quotas, and government handouts, and corporate industry quotas that are women only, need to be shut down since discrimination was never the problem to begin with, women and their career choices are the problem, caused by objectification of course, so, what else you got sugar tits? And to go all the way into the shadows, sexual objectification contributes to a culture where sexual violence isn't taken seriously. In the criminal justice system, sexually based offenses are considered especially heinous. Secondly, we don't require that men look a particular way to be taken seriously. What? Seriously? What? You are speaking levels of stupid that I find mind-boggling. Kent fucking Hovind's Creation Museum is more convincing that the Book of Genesis is the literal truth, than your video is that objectification of women is a real thing. At this point I am more convinced that T-Rex hitched a ride with Noah, than I am of anything you are saying in this video. I have not witnessed so much mind-boggling stupidity since the days of Venom Fang X. And funny thing is, and I said this at least five years ago, that you and Venom Fang X ought to get married, that you are a match made in heaven, he was so over the top stupid, so jaw dropping stupid and out of his skull, that he embarrassed the Christian activists and even the creationist community, you are the Venom Fang X of the atheist community, you're both physically good looking superficial charming sociopathic narcissists with the IQ of a pet rock, you two would have made a beautiful couple and bred a master ace of stupidity. Your offspring would be the only life forms to be given a negative score on IQ tests. The IQ scores would look like normal numbers, but with a minus in front of it, and this master race of stupidity would make the rest of the world seem smart by comparison. Seriously, like the stupidity would be so intense, it would do something interesting to other people, it would by proxy make them smart and good. This conglomeration of your DNA and his, this culmination of stupidity, your progeny would have saved the world liberating the human species from stupidity and insanity, this was destined to happen but something went wrong in the timeline, you wanted to debate him, which was your way of flirting and would have led to babies, and he responded with no you're bad and going to hell, which is true, and this was the first thing he ever got right, and the first time he told the truth, and rather than you being flattered over his honesty, you cried, the atheist community white knighted, and somehow the babies never got made, I have tried quantum leaping back in time and fixing that, but Ziggy doesn't know what the problem is, I have been trying to get Doc Brown's DeLorean, but like the H.G. Wells novel The Time Machine, I can't seem to change the present by altering the past, I guess what I am trying to say Lacey, is you're stupid, just really fucking stupid, in fact sugar tits, can you repeat what you just said? Secondly we don't require that men look a particular way to be taken seriously. Lacey, every time you speak, I lose just that much more faith in humanity, you have just said the dumbest thing I have ever heard, men spend their lives being told they have to buy this chewing gum, this cologne, this aftershave, these tennis shoes, this t-shirt, this suit, this wallet, this belt, 
this hair product, this car, drink this beer, or women won't love you, and you won't get that promotion, and your friends won't respect you. These messages make up nearly half the advertising industry. All this so called objectification of women to sell clothes and watches and jewelry to men is actually a degrading message to men that they won't be loved and accepted by women unless they buy this product. The slogan in that last article says it all a man is defined by what he wears. Your statement that man doesn't have to look a certain way to be taken seriously is so fucking retarded, I don't believe it is possible to say anything dumber than that. In this kind of culture, men are granted more sexual power than women, which leads us to see the world through men's eyes. January 15, 2014, let it be noted by the historians of Earth, for the benefit of life from other planets, who come to this world, this third rock from the sun, in a very lonely solar system, that this was the date our beautiful society came undone, a member of the human species, whose name is the color of grass, spoke unto mankind the dumbest, most false, most untrue statement ever made, a statement so false and so unbelievably stupid, that all those within earshot were driven mad. A statement so powerfully stupid, so perfectly stupid, that the neural makeup of the human mind, could not process it. Her message was broadcast to all citizens of this world by a mechanism of telecommunications, an internet broadcasting service called YouTube. Eventually, all humans heard her speak these words, and even those who did not speak her language, were able to comprehend its meaning, because the power of its stupidity transcended the language barrier and their minds began to unravel, and their brains suffered progressive necrosis, echoing again and again in their minds, were her final words, the words that would bring about human extinction. In this kind of culture, men are granted more sexual power than women. In this kind of culture, men are granted more sexual power than women. In this kind of culture, men are granted more sexual power than women. 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 In this kind of culture, men are granted more sexual power than women. 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 More sexual power Congratulations Lacey, I hereby grant you the title of dumbest human being to walk the earth, for no human has ever been more wrong, more full of shit, more stupid than you were at the moment of making that statement, and I thoroughly dare anyone to find any statement by any human being ever, that was more stupid than Lacey's statement. Try as I might, I am unable to even fathom a dumber statement, and I've tried, pink flip flops make Jewish jokes give baby seals aids, nope, still not as incoherently stupid as your statement. It almost sounds like some sort of code, like, some, sort, of, code? Wait, guys, that's it, don't you get it? Lacey is using a code to contact us for help, Lacey knows that showing off cleavage and using sex in the titles of her videos is female sexual objectification and thus would never do this willingly, we keep assuming that she is a typical dumb feminist cunt who assumes women have no agency, but the truth of the matter is, she has no agency because someone must have a gun on her, forcing her to make these videos exposing herself and portraying women as idiots, someone is holding her hostage, and so she said that incredibly stupid thing as a cry for help, knowing that no human being, not even a feminist, could say something so stupid, would tip someone off, guys, 
Lacey needs help. Well don't you worry Lacey, we'll come rescue you. I have a Bugatti. Submin has a submarine. Girl writes what has a soothing smile. News to me. John the other has a sexy wig. Hey it's good for distracting guards with his trans sexiness. Just as an inanimate thing with a hole in it to be fucked. I have a ham sandwich. Kate has a ham sandwich. What? Kate, get out of here. Paul Elam has the ability to fuck their shit up. We need soldiers, guys. We need real soldiers. Sir yes sir. Barbarossa has the bat cave. Oh yeah. He's secretly Batman. I thought it was obvious by now. And of course, for the idiots out there, they're going to misinterpret that statement. I mean, we need cultural soldiers. We need soldiers with pins. Oh, okay. Well, Stardust has a never-ending supply of mind-bending metaphors. Wordsmith extraordinaire. Sparky Fister has the golden voice. Far down the paradise. At least not for me. And when the wind is right, you can sail away and find serenity. All the cans can do miracles. Yeah, give that man a bullhorn and watch the crowd fall to their knees. Victor Zen has. Diana Davison has. Eyeshadow. Raccoon power. Fuck if I know, but I'm getting a boner, there is just something sexy about those gothic girls. Just like a gothic girl. Lost in the dark world. My little gothic girl. Oh, we're so dramatic. Christ, I love you, gothic girl. Lost in the dark world. And together we are. The MRA team.